Here we are on the east side of Antelope Island, uh, the largest island in the Great Salt Lake in northern Utah, looking east here at the Wasatch Range. This is part three of a four-part series as I've worked my way from the road on the east side of the island uh, up to this high point here. Uh, we can actually look up towards the, the summit, the highest point of on Antelope Island, Frary Peak here to the south. Uh, we're up here at the top of the unit that I focused on in part two. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey from the College of Southern Idaho. So in part two, we were looking at these deposits here, the, this diamictite, this uh, sedimentary rock that's an accumulation of large and small rock particles of all shapes and sizes randomly assorted. And this is evidence for Snowball Earth, a glacial event that as we go over time, the evidence keeps su supporting more and more that we had glaciers covering most of the planet, if not the entire planet itself. Uh, we find these same deposits on all the other continents. We're going to look then now at the next unit that sits above this. Now we can see the overall orientation of these units. They originally were sedimentary and we can see that their layering, their bedding, is steeply tilted to the right or in this case to the west. You can see that as I swing back to the north here, the bedding planes are aligned more or less in this manner here. So presumably if we move to the left, to the west, we should be able to see the top of this unit and whatever is sitting on top of it. So working our way to the west, Another outcrop here of the diamictite. I'll just verify, yeah, we've got the little clasts in here. Oops, dropped my rock hammer. Rock particles cemented together. Um, I should point out, while we're out here on Antelope Island, you'll see in places there's obvious uh, dung. These are not from cows. Antelope Island actually has uh, a large herd of free-roaming bison. Uh, we might see some in another place, but it doesn't look like they're congregating over here at the moment. But something to be aware of if you come out onto the island. Um, another beautiful outcrop here of the diamictite with all the different clasts embedded in it. Great evidence for snowball earth. And this is pretty much the last outcrop as we move over here to the west. We see a distinct change in the color of the rocks. Now we've got these pink colored rocks randomly uh, kind of jumbled about here. We do have some outcrop here. Now this unit doesn't form a nice cliff face and I think as we deduce what this material is we'll find out uh, why. So let's just come over here to a nice surface uh, and give it some good observations here. So if we look at this closely, uh, it's pink. As I touch it, it's incredibly sharp. Uh, it feels really jagged. Um, we can see there's a lot of micro fracturing or grooves in this material. It doesn't look like any sort of metamorphic rock that we've looked at. It doesn't appear to have any of the crystals we might expect to see in an igneous rock. And so uh, it might be a sedimentary rock doesn't appear to be made out of sand or mud-sized particles or clasts. And so what this rock is suggesting is that it's possibly a carbonate rock, or meaning it's either a limestone or a dolostone. And if you remember my rock series, one way we can determine that is with using an acid bottle. Um, and it looks like it's not really fizzing much, at least to the naked eye like we'd expect to see with a limestone composed of, composed of calcite. But if we give it a little bit of a scratch here and then put the acid on it, I don't know how well you can see that, but it is actually bubbling a little bit. So it is effervescing and reacting a bit with the acid. So it's weakly reacting to the acid so that tells us this is a dolostone. So this is a carbonate rock, but not limestone. It's actually dolostone. So instead of being a calcium carbonate, this is actually calcium and magnesium in carbonate form. Um, 
And so this is part of the story of Snowball Earth. This unit sits directly on top of the diamictite, the dark rock we just passed by over here. Um, and everywhere we go around the globe and look at these Proterozoic diamictites, we see these carbonate rocks sitting right on top of them. These are sometimes called cap carbonates. So if you think about it, if the planet was entirely or nearly so covered in ice, um, at some point you had to break out of that cycle. And so what would that look like? So the idea, the model we have for how these carbonates would form, uh, the, best mat the model that best matches this evidence is that we still had volcanoes and the heat within the earth accumulating beneath that glacial ice. And so eventually those volcanoes as they're erupting, they're pumping a lot of CO2 into the atmosphere, carbon dioxide. And as that CO2 would accumulate over time, a lot of the typical earth processes that might absorb that CO2 out of the atmosphere, those processes aren't taking place because we've got uh, this ice, icy planet at this point. And so by the CO2, the carbon dioxide, um, going into the atmosphere, that actually is like a blanket. It actually keeps a lot of Earth's radiation from escaping um, back out into space. So it warms the planet over time and actually produces a, a greenhouse effect. So eventually you could build up enough uh, heat in the atmosphere that you would start to melt the ice. So now the continents start to lose the glaciers, they become ice free. And then over time, we would then have weathering processes back on land like we would normally have. And those weathering processes now are carrying sediment um, and other material out to the ocean. So by rapidly uh, and intensely weathering the continent, you could build up the amount of carbonate that's out in the water uh, and that would deposit these carbonates like we have here with this cap carbonate, this dolo stone. Um, and hopefully I got that right. The chemistry is uh, slightly above my pay grade, um, but I believe that's, that's the model we have for these. So we can see that this, this dolo stone, this carbonate material, isn't hugely extensive here. And this makes sense why it would be pretty weathered, right? It's a carbonate, so it's prone to chemical weathering. When it rains or snows out here on the island, um, that actually dissolves some of the material. And that's why that outcrop I put my hand on uh, was a little bit rough to the touch, had those little kind of grooves in it. Is that some of the chemical weathering that's going on here? So we've worked our way mostly up the ridge. We've got one more destination to go, which we'll get to in part four. Uh, at some point we might also discuss some of the other cool features on this island, like these shorelines that we can see here from the rise and fall of ancient Lake Bonneville when this was uh, under a large freshwater body of water. We can see a nice pronounced um, shoreline just over here looking to the south. So we'll go ahead and head up to our final destination uh, for part four. Hopefully you've been enjoying these little videos here on Antelope Island, one of my favorite places to be. And um, encourage you to, if you feel like you can, continue to support the videos. There's a donate button on the banner of the YouTube page. There is a little thanks button to the lower right of your viewer. And under the video description, there's a couple ways that you can donate as well. Oh, and one last thing, there's actually a, a pit that was dug up here. Um, and I hunted around wondering what, what would they be actually looking for here? And I think I found the answer. There is here on the Dolo Stone, some greenish staining on the rock. You actually can see a, a darker coating over here. And these look like copper minerals. That's probably a uh, chrysocolla, a copper silicate. Um, I don't think it's malachite. I tried it with the, the acid bottle and it didn't react. So possibly someone had uh, at one point saw a little hint of copper bearing minerals and excavated a little pit here. Um, probably didn't find much more beyond that. So anyway, we'll go head up the ridge and continue on at stop four.